get into that. So, sorry, I just saw a bush baby exploding from right next to my ear here. Where's it gone, Ferg? Do you still see it? You can see the leaves are still moving where it was. It was in there. I can't see anything, Ferg. Do you see it? Oh, there it is. It's just above that cross sort of branch. There, it's moving. So, there's our bush baby. And it's just watching us at the moment. I think it's trying to plan its next move. You can just see the head kind of swiveling in amongst those thickets. And there's the eye just poking through. Hey, little guy. That's very cool. And it seems like quite a relaxed bush baby, this one. You can see the eyes just watching us. Those big ears listening to what's going on. And it amazes me that these little creatures can cover a thousand trees in a night. So I was reading a book about how they move around and they reckon that it's not uncommon for a bush baby to cover a thousand different trees as it jumps along during its evening patrol and its evening feeding course, which absolutely amazes me. Can you imagine trying to cover a thousand trees in a single night? It must be quite something to do it. Now, Ferg, do you want to go into IR so that I can stop blinding our bush baby? There we go. It also helps a little bit with the sort of contrast. Ah, there we go. Have you got your IR light on? Ah, there we go. All right, now we're going to try and see if we can see there. You can see its little eye shining through. And hopefully, we'll be able to see it coming out a little bit more. In what it is now it's just sort of tucked in behind those leaves at the moment it's difficult because of the sort of network of leaves to actually get it a hundred percent in focus but it is there I think it's just behind those leaves that are in focus for mm, there it is Are you going to move for a bit more of an open space for us, little one? Now, the problem with bush babies is if you start the car, it's undoubtedly going to jump away from you. So I'm going to hope that this one, on its own accord, decides just to come out into a little bit more of an open section that we're then able to actually sort of view it a little bit easier than what we've got currently because this is being our most camouflaged bush baby that we've seen. And it looked like it just gave a big yawn. I suppose when you're just waking up on a Saturday night, that's what happens. So, Betty, you're wondering what family a bush baby is in. Well, it's a primate, so it's part of the monkey family. So it's the same as the vervet monkeys and the baboons and all of them are part of the primates. Same situation with the bush babies. Where are you off to? It looks, it's looking around. I think it's going to move fairly shortly. Just see a little glowing eye and they almost look very gremlin like when it's in IR and you've got these two glowing eyes poking back with these big ears. I can honestly say this is one of the longest bush baby sightings I think I've ever had. This is a very relaxed one and it's not far from us at all. It's probably I would say maybe five meters, six meters from where we're sitting. It seems super chilled with us being here. And why wouldn't you be if you're in a thicket like that? Now, Ferg is just going to try to see if we can't get a better view of its eyes. Oh, the camera's battling with all the vegetation in front of the eyes of our bush baby. And the movement of the tree. You can actually see the branches are moving as well. I wonder how much they can hear with those ears. Their ears are massive in relation to the size of their head. And those eyes as well. Look how big they are. Can you imagine how well they see at night? Absolutely incredible. All right, little one. Well, I think we're going to leave you to it. And I'll continue with my evening nocturnal stories that we have so the pangolins are always just so special because of how rare they are and you know the, the fact is it's just an amazing creature that is just so unlike any of the other animals that we see out here that for me it's, there's something special in seeing all of those in terms of sort of sound experiences i think my favorite memory sound wise was having the timbers and the majingalans fight on 
um, Gauri Main. It was in the morning, so it's not really quite nocturnal, but it was before the sun came up and we were sitting at the lodge and it, it was dark and all you heard was these 10 male lions going crazy because at that time it was the six Matimbas and the four Majingalans and 10 male lions just roared and roared and the sound that came from that was something I'll never ever ever forget. So that sound and then the sound of the six Mapojos and a buffalo kill when I first first came into the Savi Sands. It must have been about my first week here in the Savi Sands and all six were on a buffalo kill and they were roaring and it was just that was something unbelievable. There was two on one side and four on the other and sort of being between all of that and just listening to that noise and that commotion was something I'll never ever ever forget so that's kind of in terms of sound and rarity and then the other really special sighting I had was a sighting of two leopards a python and two hyenas and it was just the most chaotic thing I've ever seen we had followed these leopards for most of the afternoon and they were mating leopards down in the south of the Savi Sands um, leopard called Shavonakele and the other one was called Scotia and they were marching along and it got dark and we were in an area much like this quite dense quite thick and all of a sudden the two leopards stopped on the road and we kind of turned off and we could hear this commotion off on the side and next thing we saw the leopards dart in there and we could hear hyenas cackling and we tried to punch through this thicket and as we got through we found these two hyenas with a diker kill and they were busy eating this diker and the diker looked fairly sort of wet and it looked really odd. Next thing this male leopard came flying past us with this massive snake in its mouth up into the tree with this huge python and it was there that we could see that the python had been disemboweled by the hyenas and was actually killed by the hyenas and they'd ripped this diker out of the hyena, of the, the python python and then the leopards had opportunistically come and while the hyenas were busy with the diker grabbed the snake and up into the tree so we had two leopards massive python and two hyenas with a diker kill underneath it was the most insane half an hour I've ever spent and I actually think I have some sort of I might have a photo of the snake itself the snake was absolutely huge it was I reckon probably if not three and a half maybe four meters in fact, actually probably even longer than that. So I'm going to try to see if I can't find the photo of it because it is pretty spectacular. No, I don't think I've got it. I've only got one of it a little bit more up close and you can actually see where it was disemboweled. But there is the male leopard. Now we know how big male leopards are. This is a fully grown adult male leopard. And that's the python hanging over the tree. And now this is just sort of the midsection that came around. And there's where you can see where it was disemboweled by the hyenas and that's where the diker was pulled out. Now if I tell you that this python was still going probably I would say another meter on this side and down another meter on the other side and it was in half so there wasn't any tail section to this python and that is a fully grown male leopard you can work out just how thick that animal is. So one of the most insane nocturnal sightings I think I'll ever witness in my life really was very very special indeed. Now Unfortunately, it's that time of the evening where we're starting to wind down towards the end of the safari. 